So my name is Rick Sarnes, hello, uh, aka Willis the Poet, and I'm um, a writer and a performance poet. I specialise in the dark arts of comic verse. Uh, I was inspired to write by uh, brilliant comic writers like John Hegley and Roald Dahl. And I was inspired to get up in front of a mic by the poet Stephen Clarke, who said, what's the worst thing that can happen? You'll get a polite round of applause and then you can just sit down. Inspired by people's unflinching willingness to share everything at open mic nights, I started programming my own poetry nights, bringing poetry to the people. I run comedy poetry nights, open mic performance nights, poetry slams, as well as volunteering at poetry festivals. I hope every one of these nights inspires someone to get involved in poetry. I love art and was inspired to create Poetry, a mashup of art and poetry, where I randomly pair an artist and a poet to create new work inspired by each other's existing portfolios. The three month collaboration culminates in an exhibition of all the work. And it's a brilliant example of creative mayhem. Poetry is now in its fourth year. As well as being a poet, I'm also a maker and I create all sorts of bags using recycled materials. Here's a couple. I mainly make these style of messenger bags from old suit jackets. My ethos is to give value to waste and recycle the world. I was inspired to do this work when I saw by work I saw of a design student in Birmingham probably about 20 years ago. Um, as well as sourcing my own jackets from charities, I do lots of commission work inspired by the stories behind the old coats and jackets. This bag was made from one of two old Macs that a friend uh, had found when clearing out his dad's wardrobe. He had great stories to tell about his dad and I loved making this bag from his old Burberry coat. Oh, yes. Inspired by the social enterprise Precious Plastics, I've started to incorporate some more unusual elements of design and materials into my bag making. So these two bags are made from recycled plastic waste. There's bubble wrap and coloured scraps of plastic. I run a trade school in how to make this material, which can be easily done at home using just baking sheets and, a, and an iron. Fantastic. Precious Plastics uh, open source all the instructions needed to make your own plastic recycling machines. This is my plastic shredder that I built, which allows me to do the first step in the process of turning uh, waste plastic into other things. Sharing ideas and how to instructions is a great way of inspiring other people to have a go themselves and get creative with the process. I made this funky colored plastic sheeting from waste plastic milk bottles. I experimented with the process, learned from early mistakes, and now use the plastic sheet to repair or make new things. This is a repair to the front of my wooden canoe that I made when I turned 50, inspired by skills I learned from two guys making canoes in the Lake District. Reuse, recycle, repurpose. Uh, so here are some light shades that I made using the same plastic waste material as my canoe repair. Inspiration for design ideas is, is all over the internet and I love the idea of these conical shapes. I salvaged the light fitting from a local gallery, made the shades from plastic waste. All I had to buy new was the bulbs, energy saving ones, of course. This picture shows a footstool that I made from the offcuts of my suit jackets. I'm trying to become waste free in my making process, and this enables designs to be made uh, for me to get a step closer. Good designs means this item can be used as a footstool or storage of duvets or old clothes or just filled with waste cloth in my case. I want to give waste a value and inspire people to think differently about their waste. This bag I made for a friend out of offcuts of barber jackets. So I have a contract for making bags for a guy that sells vintage clothes and I reuse barbers that he can't sell to make bags for his shop. The waste I then use for making smaller bags. Uh, photos of my barber bags on Instagram inspired my friend to ask me to make him some waterproof cycling bags. I'm also an artist and when COVID struck, I was inspired to take my art in a new direction using collage. This piece shows a, an NHS worker in protective layers and simply laying sort of bubble wrap on top created another layer of protection for the subject. I love the way that image is sort of distorted but still recognizable for, for what it actually is. I've, I've now become completely obsessed with collage. I watched a series of creative conversations during lockdown and that inspired me to just give collage a go. Simple approach, no clue in, just layering and photographing, no, no cost. I'm just re using recycled papers and magazines and anything else that I have to hand. It's just all about trying something new and just giving it a go. I strongly believe um, that collaboration is the future. What if everything we did was done collectively with a set of common goals? This mural is opposite the CoLab Imaginarium on Dudley High Street, where I found friends and inspiration to try lots of different projects related to poetry, art, space, and surroundings. 
it's a that's an absolute joy. Uh, looking everywhere for inspiration, or look everywhere for inspiration. This project was devised by a, a woodcut printer in Sheffield that I follow on Instagram. You make art, you give it away to people who want it, and they donate whatever they feel to charity. These are some of the hand-coloured uh, postcards that I give away each time the project is run. So it's a kind of win-win collaboration of, of art and donations. This is my stall when I go to markets in the real world. This is Fargo Village in Coventry, um, a collection of small makers doing great things in that city. This market inspired me to set up a makers community in Stourbridge uh, with a lovely maker that I met there. Uh, when we asked each other why we hadn't got this in Stourbridge, we just decided to make it happen and we did. More collaborative um, art pieces. Uh, I was inspired by this design idea in a magazine, but they wanted two grand for their lamp. I wanted to redress the cost of bespoke art so it's affordable to all. I made this um, with a fellow maker for about 70 quid and sold it for about 100 to a music venue in Stourbridge. Sharing tools, ideas and materials reduces costs and levels the playing field a little. This is a byproduct of an art piece you'll see in a few seconds. Uh, this is a fire pit I made for a friend from parts of an old washing machine. Whilst most bits can be recycled, there are also fun, cheap things that can be made that are bespoke and unique. Making things from other things is not a new idea. I just see it and then I'm inspired to copy it. Waste art. I'm working on a collection of photographs of broken, disposed items. This is an Apple Mac. It's deconstructed to its constitute parts and then I rearrange it and photograph it. This work is inspired by the artist Todd McClellan and I want it to force people to think about their waste, how it is recyclable, but also to give it some intrinsic value as art. And then lastly, I was chuffed to bits to be able to exhibit um, my work at a gallery in Birmingham last year. This is the first big installation piece of work I've been able to do, it's a washing machine. And it, was, it just looked brilliant in the space. It shows the scale, complexity and sheer weight of the everyday item. And I hope it inspires people to fix things and not just throw them away. <laughs>